Hello and welcome to another episode of Coast to Coast. Calvin Wetzel, not joined by Karina Mustafa today. She's on the IL, just day to day. She'll be fine. Uh, but we brought in, you know, next man up mentality. Uh, we brought in a very special guest I'm super excited about today. One of my favorite basketball analysts and also just one of my favorite friends, favorite people aside from that. So very excited to hang out with Mark Schindler. Mark, how are you doing? I'm really good. I appreciate you having me on. I'm excited to be here. I always love talking hoops together. I think this is the first time we ever potted, which is like, it feels kind of wild because we've known each other for a minute now. But um, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I was going to say, like, we talk ball all the time. We talk life, everything in between, but we haven't done this. We're just, we're just texting and now we get to talk live on a pod. I feel like it's, it's overdue. So I'm definitely excited. And this time of year is so fun for it too. To me, like nothing ever tops March. But this is about as close as it gets to me in terms of just parking myself on my couch, watching basketball all day, start to finish Thanksgiving week. All of these tournaments, everyone's going to somewhere fun, Vegas or somewhere tropical, play some ball. So we have so many tournaments to get into. Some of them already started. We've seen some going on today. We're recording on Monday, but we're going to talk about the ones coming up uh, later in the week. Let's start with the Bulldogs Classic. That one's in Vegas. It's a little baby tournament. Four teams, Stanford, Florida State, Belmont, Northwestern. I found cool like graphic brackets for the other one. So I'll put those on the screen for our YouTube viewers. I didn't really find one for this one. So uh we'll just we'll just roll with it. But so yeah, Stanford plays Belmont and Florida State plays Northwestern in the first round on Wednesday. And on Friday, the two winners meet up in the championship, two losers meet up in the third place game. So Mark, what are you looking forward to in this tournament? Are there any matchups that you're looking forward to or, or any players that we should be watching? Uh, I mean, yeah, first and foremost, I'm, I'm I'm excited for Stanford and Florida State to hopefully link up in this one um, because Florida State, I, I have to actually let me pull up the AP poll again right now because I, I don't think that they actually moved up that much. But I think that this is like a legit top 10 team, in my opinion, um, like with how well Tania Latson has been playing um with what some of their surrounding like obviously Michaela Timpson's fantastic really good on the defensive foot. Alexis Tucker has been one of the best transfers in the country um I think part of what's so fun about the earlier is like trying to figure out what's you know trends what is like real um but to me I feel like even if they start to cool down a little bit from three I think that this is a very real team with what they're able to do consistently they played a really good Florida team and won the other day in a close game um and obviously Stanford. I mean, like, as much as everybody wants to talk about Cameron Brink, and understandably, I think the most important part for this team right now has been Kiki Ariathan's growth. Like, she's gone from a borderline starter last year to now she looks like she's going to be an all-pack 12 player. Um, and she was dominant in their game yesterday, uh, a pretty crucial win for them over Duke. Um, so, yeah, those are two of the matchups and players I'm – one of the matchups and, and some of the players I'm most excited about, but there's definitely a lot of other ones we can get into as well. Yeah, no, I, I love you brought up Kiki because she's been absolutely hooping. And, and this front court to me, like, you know, people talk about Cameron Brink and like a lot of the story with her all career has kind of been foul trouble. But to me, like th this front court now, when you have Kiki and then you have Nunu Agara off the bench, stepping up as a freshman, like, not that Cameron Brink has definitely improved a lot in that area in terms of staying out of foul trouble, but it's honestly not terrible for this team, even if she is only able to play 20, 25 minutes a game, because this front court is so deep. That's what stood out to me, I think, uh, and like the way that they shut down Mackenzie Holmes in that Indiana game. But like you said, like they almost lost to Duke in overtime. So this is another one of those teams that, you know, trying to discern what's real and what's not. Like the Indiana game, the Duke game, probably somewhere in between realistically. Can I give you my take? Yes. Yes. Hit me. Here's right. my thing. I think Duke should uh, should probably have been ranked today. Um, I think Duke is a very good basketball team. Their freshmen are are fantastic and are going to keep getting better. This is more about Davidson is awesome. Like I I'll, let me uncork right now. I think other than Gonzaga, I think Davidson is the best mid major team in the country. Like I am there. That's where I'm at after the first two weeks of college basketball. I don't know if you're at that point. Um, but that's like, cause I think I saw a bunch of stuff justifying Duke not being in today. And I, I think it's fine. Like if they had a loss, whatever, um, like understandable, well, two losses, my bad, um, understandable. But I think the point is like, I meant to say like that, that is a top 25 team this year in Duke. I think Davidson is just like that good. 
and that hard to match up with. Not to like make this a whole Davidson thing, but I have something coming out on them tomorrow because I think like that's it shouldn't be Duke just got upset. It should be wow, this Davidson team is really, really good. No, I I love that take. And I'm like, I haven't gotten a chance to watch Davidson that much. I watched uh some of the North Carolina game. I didn't get to watch the Duke game at all, but um, like they, they're almost three and zero against the ACC. They're a couple bounces away from that North Carolina win. Not now Wake Forest probably probably down this year, but the win over Duke and then Wake Forest and, and a, I think it was a four point loss to North Carolina. Like mm-hmm. that's that's an incredible way to start their season. And yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. Like I I think we do this a lot. I think like last year I remember kind of doing it when you know when Middle Tennessee like blew the doors off of Louisville and everyone was like, Oh, Louisville's terrible. And to me, it was like, no, yep. middle Tennessee is really good. Like maybe Louisville's not the same as the final four team, but middle Tennessee is just a really good basketball team. And every year I feel like we do this with mid majors. So I yep. love you coming on here and giving mid majors some love, Mark. That's what I'm all about. Needed. It's needed. <laughs> yes. And go read Mark's thing. Our, is it, is it an article? Is that what's coming out? Yeah. It'll be an article tomorrow. Yeah. Go read it. I will go. I will go read it. Definitely. Probably today. By the time people are listening to this, um, there's another mid major in this field. By the way, before we move on to the next tournament, that we should talk about Belmont. Yes. Consistently, one of the best mid majors. Have you gotten to watch them this year at all? Yes. And the player. I mean, there are quite a few solid players on on Belmont. Um, but Jalen Banks was like, yes. They lost to Mississippi State yesterday, but watching her poise and composure as a true freshman was like crazy to me um like very much a true two guard I, I wouldn't really call her a point i think especially the way that they use her but like very comfortable getting to the rim has some really good change of pace and hesitation stuff already um i was crazy impressed with her like that's the player to watch for me from belmont from belmont and i think it'll be interesting to see how they round into form around her and, and how she keeps growing but uh there there are i mean again i think this this we just have a really good crop of mid major teams this year, in my opinion, from from what I've seen so far. We do, and like as a Missouri Valley fan, like I was thinking over the off season, like okay, Belmont loses Destiny Wells, they lose Madison Bartley. Like I don't really know if they brought in that caliber of transfer to replace them. Like how are they going to be able to replace this production? And the, but I was not familiar with Jalen Banks as a freshman, and she storms onto the scene, and like. Belmont's right there. They just reloaded. That's what they do. Love that team. Splashville, always launching three. So definitely someone to watch in this field. Uh, do you have any other th- thoughts on this field before we move on to the next one? Um, I think it'll, just as like a straight thought, I think it'll be really interesting to see how Northwestern plays here. They've kind of struggled out the gates a little bit. Um, like not that they've been awful, but I think the ball pressure that Notre Dame was able to put on them showed a lot of flaws in where they were at offensively right now. Um, cause I think you look at that game and it's like, what, like a hundred something and 51. And I think everybody's like, well, their defense must've been bad. It was, no, they could not get the ball off the court. Um, they, they really struggled with Hannah Hidalgo. They really struggled with everything that Notre Dame was doing. So to me, I'm looking to see, you know, what can Northwestern do to kind of start to round into form with some, some of that. Cause so that'll be big for them coming into the big 10 season. Yeah, no, for sure. They, they could probably use Veronica Burton would help, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely something to watch for. So, all right, this next one, I do have the bracket. I'm going to put it up and cover up our faces. So, if you're watching on YouTube, this is the Cayman Islands Classic. It uh, starts on Friday, and it's not really a bracket. It's just one of those with a bunch of random games, I think, um, which I don't, I don't know. I always like the bracket ones more. Maybe it's just me, but there's so many cool matchups in this one um, that, you know, who cares? Like, we get uh lsu and yukon were the preseason top two obviously ucla in this field kansas is a team i know you really like a lot virginia tech final four team coming back and a couple maybe pesky mid-majors uh you know niagara is a team that i think uh if people haven't watched like they press as much as anyone in the country uh and they're, you know, they they might give one or two power conference teams a little bit of trouble early on if they're if they're not ready for that. I'm not gonna say they're gonna win a game, but uh, something someone that I think you should watch. So, Mark, what are you looking for in this field though? Um, and any matchups that you're looking at? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it off the bat. I love Kansas. Um, I think Tayana Jackson is incredible. It does not get enough draft love. Um, you know, with with what she's doing right now. Um, 
Also, the player that I would shout out to, Samaya Nichols, has been really solid for Kansas as a true freshman coming in. She's one of their highest recruits that they've ever had, if I remember correctly. And she's definitely got some freshman stuff to her, but like some of the composure and stuff she shows for them is, um, you know, somebody who can really run a lot for them and just be solid has been really fun to watch. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they figure out bench stuff because I thought they were pretty solid against Penn State other than their bench play. They had, they had some things to figure out. Uh, defensively for sure. But while they bring back almost all their starters, um, they I think they only returned like one player off the bench and it was felt in that game. Um, but point being, I, I think especially when you look at how they play um, and what they can do to be pretty shifty defensively, I'm really interested to see what that can look like against some of these teams. Um, and I, again, like when you're just talking about a team that I think should have made the tournament last year, like I pretty much any team that wins the WNIT you're going to look at and be like, well, they shouldn't have gone to the tournament. Um, but for a team that's looking to build off that, I think it's really important that they have a good tournament here. Obviously going to be a very loaded Big 12. Yeah, I feel like we've seen the WNIT be a launching pad for a lot of teams every year. I know uh, Arizona, I think they won it. Maybe they got second the year right before they made the Final Four. Indiana mm -hmm. was the year before that. Uh, and, so, and, and now look at what Indiana has been the last few years. So, yeah, definitely something – to watch for with Kansas. And I, I feel like Zakaya Franklin hasn't even really like kind of gotten going yet, which is like yeah. when she's in, and, and they still look pretty impressive when she gets going, like it's just going to be that much more dangerous. But uh, one thing I'm interested for in this field too, um, is to see just kind of like, I still haven't really figured out LSU yet. And obviously they have all these stories going on with like Angel Reese, you know, we don't know all the details. Um, and, but They've also, whether they have her or not, I think even within games this year, they've looked like world beaters like we thought, and then they've looked extremely beatable and not not just in that first Colorado game, like uh, in a couple of those other games too. They, they really struggled against Kent State for a while, pulled away late. I think uh, Anissa Morrow has, has looked better without Angel on the court, obviously has more room to operate. Flauge has moved to the bench, and uh, since she missed a game, they started – putting last year Poe in the starting lineup. And I think Flauge has been kind of finding herself uh, coming off the bench since then. So there, there's a lot of interesting, uh, you know, pieces on this team, but we have to talk about Michaela Williams too. I, I love that you brought Karina is going to really appreciate that. Uh, we've been bringing up all the freshmen um, because she's all about the freshman fire. So I feel like we have to mm -hmm. talk about Michaela Williams. What a, I, I know you've watched LSU some, uh, do you have a take on Michaela Williams? Yeah, she's fantastic. I, I said before the season, um, and I think she's the most important player for them. Uh, well, she's not necessarily, quote, unquote, the best. She is the player who can really get their shot off in the half court. Like, obviously, Haley can do it some. I think the idea was for her to come in and be more of a, a point guard. Um, but with uh, with Michaela, I think, like, when you look at her size, you look at her release point, and then that's very much come through, the way that she's able to attack at all three levels. Um, it's been really fun to watch them mix in, like, post-ups for her. She has a smaller guard on her just really versatile in everything she can do. She has like a very non-freshman game. Um, so I've really enjoyed watching Michaela Williams. I've, I mean, she had a freaking 40 piece the other day, which is pretty nutty. Um, but, and, and not to like fully divert the conversation, but I think right behind her is where it also becomes important because as much as everybody was talking about, like as soon as the Colorado game happened, it was all, oh, well, the guards, well, this, well, that. My issue for them was the post. like. Aaron at Vonley ate them alive on the interior. Yes. They had no answer for her. Anissa was not doing well in the post. Angel was not doing well in the post. And to be fair, like Aaron at Vonley is a very good player. But I think when you're talking about a team that has national title contention on their minds, like you got to fix that. So I think watching Samaya Smith come in and start the last four games and be as productive as she's been while also being as good as she's been has been really fun. Like obviously you want to see that against more top flight opposition, which I think to me – that's probably what I'm looking forward to seeing the most from LSU in this this tournament. They're going to play against good front courts, Kansas, Virginia Tech, UConn. Um, so I think looking at that top to bottom is going to be really important for me and, and using this as a little bit of a measuring stick to see where LSU's at. Yeah, no, I love it. Absolutely. Because like I, I think Quay Miller had a good game in that 
Colorado game as well. I, honestly, Colorado. Everybody on that Colorado right. team was yeah. awesome. Well, everyone is. <laughs> right. Oh, three to four minutes shot, but... like, hit, like, what? She was, like, <laughs> seven to nine or seven to ten from three. It was crazy. Yeah. Right. I, I Like, I brought this up a couple weeks ago on this pod. I, the, when I went, because uh, I, I couldn't watch the start of that game. Illinois State was playing. I went back and watched the film. Because having already known what Frida Foreman did, very first play off the tip, they go under a screen on her. It's like, oh, oh boy. All right. That yeah. big mistake right away. But uh, yeah, Colorado definitely had the best front court in that game. Not saying they have the best front court, but in that game they did. This field to me, like, I yeah, we're going to answer a lot of questions, I think. Because like you said about LSU, uh, I think UConn is a team that has a lot of question marks now without AZ. Um they oh and stretches that's, against Minnesota. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, not to not to not to tear off you, but I think that's that's one of the games I'm most interested for is Kansas versus UConn. Because I think that is a team that again, like the defense has not been perfect yet for Kansas. I think Penn State was a, a really difficult team for them with how well they spaced the floor. With what UConn's offense has looked like without AZ, not that I think that they're going to just fall off. Like I think the defense was really good. Like we saw really good stuff defensively from them from Minnesota, but Minnesota is a team that right now, which I can't believe I'm saying it after watching them play last year, but like Minnesota is a team that gets into you. Like they really play tough defensively. And I think with what Tayana can do, like they play, like they will full on switch with her at the five. We'll do a lot of stuff with um, player closer to the level of the screen, letting her use her mobility. Um, and I think for a UConn team that really, needs uh to get the most out of their spacing that could be rough like i'm interested to see what that looks like when they play someone who's that, that dynamic defensively um obviously kansas has to play them on the other end as well but like i think to me like again we're talking about this being like a very important tournament for seeing how some of these teams play against uh more versatile coverages yeah and like you know you lose a lot of gravity when you lose az foot obviously in minnesota like Don Plitz White, great hire. That defense looks totally different, but it's they still don't have the same personnel that Kansas has. Uh, Kansas has defensively, so it's like UConn. If if they struggled with that, like I, I don't want to knock Minnesota because, like I said, they've they've looked much better defensively since they hired Don. But Kansas is going to present a big challenge for sure. Um, mm-hmm. We got a couple more fields to look at. Did you have any other thoughts about that one though? Uh, no, nothing too crazy on that one. Yeah, all right. Let's uh let's move on. US Virgin Islands Paradise Jam. This one always has two brackets or two t- I guess they're not this is another one that's not brackets, just two tournaments. But you have the island tournament, you have the reef tournament. Uh we talked about Colorado already. They're gonna be in this tournament. NC State's gonna be in this tournament. Uh on the other side, you have Texas, you have South Florida. Uh High Point is a mid major that I love talking about. Uh I'm kind of a money ball team that um you know, a, a little bit in the mold of like if if you're familiar with FGCU for our listeners at all, who takes like three mid range jumpers a season. Uh, <laughs> high points basically that because their coach Chelsea Bambury uh, coached under Carl Smesco at FGCU, so uh, it's a really fun team for I think people who are into that. But um, there's some good talent on on both sides here too. Mark, what are you looking for uh, from this one? Any matchups stand out? Huh, yeah, that's a good question. I think this one is like a little bit harder to decipher because I we just don't really know on some of these teams yet. Like point blank for South Florida, is Sammy Puis is going to be healthy? Uh, because she hasn't played yet this season. She's their best player after um you know Elena Shineke and um and Dulce Fink and Menjiadu are now in the W. Um obviously Elena is you know bounced around a few teams, but like point being, like I think there's been really exciting stuff with their freshman point guard that's come from overseas because as USF does, they are the best overseas recruiters in the world. I think that they have like nine different countries represented on their roster right now. Um, But without Sammy, like their offense is just not the same. Um, They struggled. uh, I'm trying to remember which matchup it was, but they, they haven't looked quite like we're accustomed. Alabama maybe. Yes. It was against Alabama. Yeah. Um, Which to be fair, I think Alabama is a really good team, but yeah. Um, so I want to see what that can look like from them. How do they keep growing? Um, with Cincinnati, I think they're interesting because I don't really have a great feel for them as a team yet. I really like Julian Hayes. I've always liked Julian Hayes. Um, I'm still trying to get a feel for what Coach Merriweather wants um, her team to look like in, in their first season in the Big 12, which is still just like jarring to say. Um, 
Kentucky. Kentucky needs to find some traction Ooh. in this tournament. <laughs> like, to be fair, yeah. I think like people blew way too much out of the water with that FGCU loss. Like, that is a really damn good team. I'm sure people, yeah. if they are listening, heard me say that I don't think like that. I think somebody else is the best mid major, second best mid major in the country. And they're, they're, you know, I bulletin board material. But point being, like, FGCU <laughs> is very good. Like, it's not like it's just a, a thing. But I, I am just curious to see what this looks like with Kentucky. Um, so, yeah, but I th- uh, then when you you talk about everything, I'll stop down. I think it's a really interesting kind of three-way heavy, heavyweight with NC State, Texas, and Colorado. Like kind of how does that end up equating? What does that look like at the end? Because um, I think to me Colorado is the best team out of those three, but matchups any given day can can change things. When you have a guard like Sanaya Rivers who's six one six two that can get to her spots like that and is so fast like – you saw UConn have trouble with that. I think we're going to see a lot of teams have trouble with that. Um, it was really fun. I don't know if you watched the Rhode Island game yesterday, but um, they threw just a ton of zone at NC State to really challenge what their outside shooting looks like. And it was kind of fun because Sanaya really found ways to be effective still and, and pick her spots. So I don't know. Like I think there's a lot to figure out with this one, especially too because like Texas hasn't really played anybody yet. Um, so I'm interested to just see what they look like against – higher end competition. Um, so I know that was like a million things, but I'm very interested by a lot of this tournament. That's what this week is all about. There are a million things to watch. This is why I like the bracket ones better because I, you can yeah. maybe get some of those big matchups where like we do get Colorado versus NC State uh, on Saturday. Oh, wait, but, yeah, I totally read that wrong. We're not going to see Texas play under those teams. Right, which I, we should. Why Why don't we? Like, why can't we have the winner of the island one play the, I don't know. I, I don't it really. It makes sense to me, yeah. Yeah, right. Like, let's let's just do them all. The brackets are cool because then you get then you get Texas for Colorado, Texas for NC State, whatever. You get those cool matchups on the last day. But hey, that's just me. Whatever. What do I know? Uh, But there's so many there's so many cool teams on on both sides of this tournament for sure. And and like you said, some teams with question marks. uh, I'm really, really looking forward to that NC State Colorado game because Colorado, I think, you know, they burst on the scene beating LSU uh, and then we haven't seen them be extremely tested since then. And obviously LSU was coming in that game with a lot of new pieces, some stuff they were trying to figure out. And NC state, like you said, they like pretty easily, like it wasn't blow up, but they pretty easily beat UConn. And then they struggle with that zone uh, against Rhode Island. So what are we going to see from this matchup? Like, it, is there anything in particular that you're looking forward to uh, with that match? Because I think that's the headliner matchup. When you look, I, I'll put all the games up again. When you look at all of these, I feel like this is like by far the headliner matchup. Uh, 2 p.m. Whatever time zone this is, Saturday, November 25th. Anything specific that you're watching for? Uh, I think kind of like we just mentioned a little bit, like how they guard Sanaya Rivers. I'm gonna be interested to see because I don't think like like they have good perimeter defenders. Jalen is Jalen Schrod's fantastic. But like I think asking her to, you know, be the quote unquote stopper on on Sonai Rivers for an entire game is not gonna happen. Like obviously they they play pretty multiple too. They don't just like play straight man to man all the time. Um I think that'll be interesting for me. Like, how does NC State handle what some of that looks like? Um, because honestly, like I was pretty impressed with how they ended up handling Rhode Island yesterday. Cause again, another really good mid-major team. Um, but like I think top to bottom it'll be really interesting in finding out what the rest of nc state can look like outside of Zanai rivers and zoe brooks who have both been fantastic to start the year um that would be interesting but i think for me like with colorado it's fun because like you mentioned like obviously they played smu they played oklahoma state and won both those games both those games were tight for a little bit but then it felt like they really found their footing in the fourth quarter and pulled away um i just feel good about this colorado team like i I don't know where I'm at with NC State yet. Like, I think that they are a, like a legit team that should be ranked, but I feel a lot more with Colorado just because especially like when you – like they, they have enough defensively, but then when you talk about what they bring offensively, they are so hard to guard. If you if, if Jalen gets in the paint and they are able to start swinging the ball around, like, good night, especially with how good their posts are because I think this is a matchup – we're really we're really going to find out a lot about NC State's front court. I think Mimi Collins has been really solid to start the year, but like playing against Quay Miller and Aaron at Bonley is different. Like that, those are two very versatile, very strong posts. You can both kind of play inside out. 
Um, it's not easy to guard. So I think that'll be that's probably what I'm most interested in for, for NC State in this matchup. Yeah, and you have to worry about all that, and then you have to chase free to form and around screens too all, all game, which we saw how that worked out for LSU. Um, well, we have one more sort of big tournament, and uh, this one is a bracket, so I love it. Uh, it's the Gulf Coast Showcase. I feel like I always talk about this with Karina. I got to get better at like, we, we got to figure out a way to make these bracket, make these pictures like bigger or something. It's like weird because our face, I don't know. Anyway, um, brackets on the screen. If you want to go watch on YouTube, this one I'm excited about because we do get the potential for some of these big matchups. We could see Iowa versus North Carolina. We could see Iowa versus Kansas State again, who knocked them off the other day. Also knocked them off last year without Aoka Lee. Uh, so I'm sure Iowa wants to get a third shot at them. Uh, we might see Iowa versus FGCU, who we talked about a little bit in the second round, which I think uh, would be a really, really entertaining matchup. Threes would be flying both sides in that one. Um, and then there's some other good mid-majors in this one too. Vermont, sneaky good. I think Emma Utterback, if you haven't seen her play, is a, a really a joy to watch. Uh, Delaware is always pretty good. So, yeah, what any matchups, I mean, we probably kind of already hit on them, but any, anything you're looking forward to in this bracket? Uh, yeah, I think Kansas State against North Carolina could potentially be very interesting uh, just because, like, UNC is playing way differently this year. I don't know how much you've watched them yet. Um, I know you mentioned that you watched part of the Davidson game, um, but they play a lot smaller this year. Like I think part of it's been, I, I believe Anya Pools missed some time, um, but like with, with Maria Gokdang playing at the five now, they've like, whenever Gokdang comes off the court, they shift Alyssa us, us beat to the five and play four guards. Like I don't think Tiani keys registered a minute yet this season. And I thought she was going to play a lot more, but I also didn't realize like, okay, they're going to play four guards. Um, how does Kansas State deal with that? And more importantly, how does that look? Okay, do you get into foul trouble playing against Sayoka Lee, which very difficult to not do. Um, so I think that just poses some interesting matchup stuff that we're going to see all year. Like, because obviously, like we can look at last year, same thing that, that happened with Notre Dame. Like Notre Dame really struggled with Virginia Tech because, hey, we play Liz Kitley, Lauren Ebo gets into foul trouble, and then we don't really have a lot of answers other than doubling the post or trying to front. Um, same thing that I think UNC might deal with this year when they have to play some of the more post heavy teams in the ACC. Like, okay, this is good test to get ready. Like obviously Aoka and, and, and Liz are completely different players. But I think when you're talking about this player is six, six, we have to guard them. We are a smaller front court and we want to play more outside in. What does that look like for us on both ends? So I think for me, like I'm interested to see that because it's going to tell us a lot about what the rest of the season could look like for them. I also want to shout out though, Western Kentucky has been really good this year. So don't be shocked if they like decide to pull their own upset over Kansas State here, because um, they are they're four and one. Their only loss is to like a sneakily undefeated Vanderbilt team right now. Shout out to Shay Ralph; they're doing good stuff over at Vandy. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to see what that looks like. Um, you mentioned FGCU; they're always a threat, especially with what they do to win a tournament style setting. Them versus Iowa would be like an incredible game. I would love <laughs> to watch that happen. I think they'd have the exact same problem that Drake just had though, to be honest, um, where it's like, if you try and run a track meet with um, the best track team in the world, like, Hey, you might lose that. Um, so, you know, <laughs> it, it could be interesting. Yeah. Um, but then I think last thing I would have on this one, it's not even about this bracket. You mentioned it about like teams potentially facing each other again. Shout out to Middle Tennessee and Memphis for being the first pair of teams to already face each other twice this season. Uh, I believe they faced each other in the second game of the regular season for them for, for one another, and they just played each other again. So I enjoy that. I always enjoy little things like that. Yeah, it's, it's always the weird stuff. And, uh, I, you know, I'm trying to think if, if we've probably seen it before, if, if any non-conference opponents have ever faced three times in a season. Uh, because I think Middle Tennessee and Memphis are both postseason teams this year, so it yeah. could happen. But uh, I'm, I'm sure it's happened before. Um, but yeah, th this is a really, really fun bracket. It, who knows? Like, it would not be out of the question to see something like Iowa versus North Carolina in the third place game instead of the championship mm -hmm. or something, um, because of. Like you said, the talent, like Kansas State could win, Western Kentucky, like you said. And yeah, I like, I agree that FGCU is on one hand, like 
when you get into a track meet like with Drake, like that's going to be tough. But on the other hand, like FGC, FGC's offense is a little bit different than Drake. Like that, yeah, they both like to run, they both like to shoot the three or whatever. But Drake, uh, just like the movement and all the duck ins and things like that, you know, it's it's a little bit different. And mm-hmm. I think FGCU is, I don't, I don't want to say this because Drake is so hard to guard, but I think. Drake's system is when you have time to prepare for it the way that Iowa did, like you, you can, you know, um, it, it's a system that you can, you can't shut it down. Like they didn't shut it down. They allowed 90 points, but I, I think Iowa will have a tougher time guarding FGCU. Um, and I don't know. I also thought Drake would keep that game close and they didn't. So well, I don't, I don't really know what I'm talking about. I've been underestimating Iowa too much. <laughs> no, I thought you and I like, <laughs> I, I think what's so tough, because, like, one of the other things I'd add, not to, like, get on my soapbox, but I think I just am, like, a lot less miffed by blowouts in college basketball than I am in the pros, to be honest. Like, I think the biggest, starkest difference between the pros and college is consistency. Like, so much of what illustrates a blowout is did a team just shoot 60% from three? Like, yes, yes. Or did a team just shoot 11% from three? And I think, like, to me, it's so much more about what kind of looks is somebody getting? What does that look like if you're playing them three or four times? Like, obviously, that doesn't erase that somebody won or lost. But I think, you know, when you're talking about looking top down at something, I think that it makes a difference. Um, So I think, you know, because it's like it's so hard because like we talked about, like if Drake has a a hotter start than they did or like some of their they just don't throw one or two turnovers and things are different, like, you know, not to go like all in that direction, but because the exact same thing happened with Iowa at times last year where in some of their losses, it was like, okay, well, we just went extremely cold in the stretch and there's not a lot you can do about that. Or same thing with like Maryland, because Maryland and Iowa had one of the weirdest regular season matchups <laughs> period last year. Like Iowa, yeah, Iowa got beat blasted. them by, I think, yeah, Iowa beat them in by the second like time, right? money in Carver and then they lost by like 15 in in maryland so it's like you know it's i just, thought it was more than that i think they might have lost by like it feels 30. like it might have been it might have been more actually yeah i don't so, know it was a lot yeah Brene alexander hit like six threes in the first half yeah it was yeah you know and that's not again like not to discredit teams but it's just more like i just it i, I I'm, I'm trying to be like less focused on like was this a blowout wasn't it you know yeah no for sure i do think shooting variants in general in basketball probably especially in college is something that like people probably don't really understand enough and like you can kind of look at a box score if you didn't watch a game and look at the three-point percentages and tell if that score really was sort of accurately reflecting how the team's played or not because everyone now and then like you said you get a team that shoots 12 for 22 and then the other team shoots like three for 22 and it was a 30-point game but like maybe this team really probably should have won by like 10, you know, mm-hmm. like, yeah, the shots just shots just kind of went in. So, and when you shoot as many threes as FGCU and Iowa both do, like that could easily happen one way or the other for either one of these teams, which is why Precisely. I still think it's not a given. Iowa wins this game. Although, like I said, they, they keep blowing people out that I think are going to hang with them. So credit. And then Kansas state, totally different story, but yeah, I like, these matchups are so intriguing, whatever happens, blowout or not. Like, there's going to be a lot of fun teams to watch and players to watch. Um, yeah. Did you have any last thoughts on like any of these? Um, or any that we didn't even talk about? I think on the ones we didn't talk about, I am kind of excited for the Cancun challenge just because, again, like, I think we get to find out more about some teams we haven't seen maybe play up yet. Like, Georgia Tech and Michigan State are two teams I'm both interested to see quite a bit more of this year. Obviously, Robin Freilich's first year at Michigan State. They have been just housing teams right now. Granted, they haven't played a huge non-conference schedule yet. That obviously heats up here in Cancun. So I'm excited for that because um, we saw – like I loved everything she did at Bowling Green. So I'm excited to see how that continues to translate at MSU. Um, obviously, again, like a big tournament for Maryland to, to build off of an extremely close win uh, over Syracuse yesterday that had a lot of people biting their nails. We get to find out more about Washington state who has played like a really solid non-con their game against Gonzaga was very fun. Creighton is awesome. I love watching Creighton play basketball. Um, I mentioned Georgia tech, but like they have two freshmen who have just been like absolutely phenomenal to start the year. I want to see if they can continue that against higher level competition. 
James Madison, again, really, really good uh, mid-major team. That was a, a tourney team last year. Had a lead on Ohio, significant lead on Ohio State in the first round. Um, so, you know, what do they look like in this? Like Green Bay, who beat Creighton. We get potentially another matchup like that, which is exciting. Because, yes. like, I haven't watched Green Bay, to, to be honest, this year. But, like, seeing them you beat should. a good Creighton team was like, oh. So, they're on my radar to watch. I'm excited to watch the Cancun Challenge. I just haven't had time to check in on any of their other games. But, yeah, I think, like, well, it doesn't have the, quote, unquote, like, top 15, top 10 ranked teams like these are a lot of i i would bank on over half these teams making the tournament which probably doesn't like in reality not that much it's like five but still i think when you look at this entire shakedown like i don't think that's crazy um with how a lot of these teams have looked and how they kind of project out so it'd yeah, be a no. really fun matchup to just not match up but like a really fun tournament to to figure out more about some tournament teams yeah that's a great point and there's like uh i probably should have like put some graphic or whatever, put these up, but uh, real quick. So there's 10 teams in this one, Maryland, Washington state, UMass, Green Bay, Georgia tech, Creighton, Michigan state, James Madison, Montana state in New Mexico. And like you said, you haven't watched green Bay yet. Uh, like that's Ooh, maybe I just one. found out why you didn't want to bring them up. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking at their schedule right now? Yeah. Hey, I just look at their schedule. That makes yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah. That. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's good. I like, actually I, I gained a lot of respect for that. I already had a lot of, they did the same thing at Illinois State. So what Mark's talking about, you guys who listen to this, you know I'm an Illinois State fan. Illinois State opened the season this year winning 105 to like 57 or something against, which is Omaha, nothing tough, but they look like world beaters on offense. Very next game, everyone in Illinois State Nation is feeling super high about themselves. They go into Green Bay, get blasted by 28. And to me, like I, like I love my birds. That says a lot about Green Bay though. Like they, in watching that game, like I went up there for that game did the same thing last year like i said uh and they have so many athletic bigs they have really big guards like they have one through five just size athleticism shooting everything you need like it just in terms of being an extremely tough basketball team to match up with on both ends and i was so impressed with them in that game and in the creighton game they went on the road, beat Creighton by double digits. And we're talking about shooting variants. Like Green Bay started off the season with a loss to you and I. I want to say they shot two for 21 from three in that game. So that's misleading. If any of those go in, they, they might have gotten that win on the road against you and I, who is another very good mid-major, picked first in the Valley. So Green Bay's record, probably a little bit misleading right now, but that's an extremely good team. I think could make some noise. And they have a really good program history. I was like, when, when I was in there, arena just looking across the the rafters like they have so many so many tournament banners switched for a, a mid-major like that that's any mid-major but especially one that you don't really think of first like you would with gonzaga or someone like that like is really impressive um so yeah. it's a team that i i really enjoy watching when they're not beating illinois state by 20 <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah i'm glad you brought up this tournament it's gonna be a fun one uh well, I guess one other one, as long as I mentioned you and I, that we'll wrap up with here, um, is the South Point shootout in Las Vegas. Uh, Syracuse, you and I, Iowa State, Vanderbilt. You brought up Vanderbilt earlier. They, I think they won by like 50 earlier today as we're recording this on Monday. Uh, you and I, like I said, picked first in the Missouri Valley. Maya McDermott, their point guard, been hurt a little bit. Uh, hopefully we get to see her come back. Syracuse, obviously – that game against Maryland that you brought up uh, looked really good. And then Iowa State still trying to answer some questions after losing Ashley Jones. Uh, they got beat by Drake. Drake got one Iowa Power Conference win at least. So I believe uh, – has Emily Emily Ryan still hasn't played yet, has she? I don't believe she has, which is, is yeah. another obviously big question mark with them. Uh, do you know anything about that when she's coming back? Because I actually have no idea. I have no idea when she's supposed to be back. I know if I remember correctly, it was like several weeks, not like – you know, relatively soon. It seemed rather indefinite, not like something was going to happen quickly, which, yeah. like you mentioned, drastically hurts them quite a bit. Especially when you lose Ashley Jones. Obviously, Lexi Donarski transfers to UNC, so you lose some of your big pieces, and then you lose Emily Ryan for a while, too. Like, really sort of going through a big uh, shift there. That it's, uh, do you, Can you do, a, do an over-under for me on 
on how – well, okay, not over under. Can you guess how many freshmen are currently listed on their roster? On Iowa State's? On, on Iowa State's roster? Yeah. Um, ooh, I'm going to say eight. Okay. No, you over seven. It's six. They have six. <laughs> but you still, asked like, the question. I figured it was a lot. That is a lot. Like, yeah. Out of how yeah, many? Like 13, 14? Especially, yeah. I think out of like, yeah, 12 or 13. Yeah. Like, so this is basically like half. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. A, a very much uh, transition phase for the. Oh, and this is one actually. I didn't even look up. I don't actually know how this tournament works. I don't know if you do. I like probably should have taken the time to look up. I don't know if, if it's a bracket or matchups or whatever, but if we do get Iowa state versus you and I in this one, uh, that's another one that one of those non-conference that will play twice early on. Cause all the Iowa schools always play each other uh, every year. So they're going to play each other anyway. I don't know. If, actually, I think, you know what? No, I remember looking it up and I think we don't, I think it's one of those with just matchups, no bracket. So I think we see Iowa state play Syracuse, Iowa state play Vandy. Uh, and then you and I place both those teams as well, but they don't play each other. But yeah, I mean, just to wrap up, like, are there any matchups from that that you're looking at or any, anything you're excited about in that one? Uh, I think you mentioned a little bit. I want to see how um, how Iowa State keeps rounding out and hopefully starts to piece things together. Um, I think the player who I'm, like, watching, especially because it seems unlikely that Emily Ryan is going to be back, like, Nyamir Dew is a player who is, like, I, I hope that I said her name correctly. It, can flow off the tongue super well but like i uh i have really liked her game like it always pops to me like she had a really really good game in the in the one game that iowa state beat baylor last year um but she just kind of struggled with consistency throughout her career she had a really good start through two games as as looking i mean obviously gonna be a full-time starter now i want to see what that can keep looking like from her because she's just when you whenever there's a player who's like six two that can shoot a little bit that can handle that can play defense like i'm very interested so um i want to see you know her kind of con continue to take steps like that yeah absolutely that's going to be definitely something to watch in that one um tune into all of these uh you know throughout thanksgiving break uh there's so much good basketball on like we said it's flow hoop season i know some of these are probably on another channel but this is like the time of year when if any other time you really should subscribe to flow hoops Yes, and, and make sure you're watching. And it's it. also um, like, to be fair, it's not that expensive. So like, right, like just, just worth it. it. It's honestly, yeah. If you love ball, you gotta get flow hoops in November. That's that's the time. Uh, yeah, Mark, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I realized we should have done the thing that me and Karina have where we put our handle on here on the screen, but we don't. What's I don't know your inst or your Twitter handle off the top of my head. What's your Twitter handle? It's at mg underscore Schindler. All right, so go look up Mark on Twitter so you can find his uh, articles. And he's got a couple of good podcasts that he told me about that I'm sure he'll he'll uh, post some emojis or whatever to get you to guess who's coming on. Uh, I won't give it away, but go follow Mark uh, and keep up with all that content. Um, and yeah, Mark, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me.